Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Babel. We're bringing the Southeast Asia Regional for the Spring Championship. We got ourselves here a next match. It's Group A between the Thailand team uh, as well as the Malaysians here. It's FFKG versus Hot Hit Gaming. Draft just started. Let's go into it. Um, barely beginning here. We just saw the Towers of Doom getting picked up. Now, Towers of Doom is a very interesting battleground. Uh, something that definitely a lot of people didn't expect to see. The main reason why is because uh, it's still very, very cliche cliche you could say uh, very unexpected to go for Towers of Doom it's a battleground that the teams are trying to find a lot of control over each other and uh, there's not much of a direct push going on FFKG by the way on the blue side with the first pick and ban Ragar gonna get picked up here there's a nice ban on Zagara I like that a lot Grimmie also getting banned out but that also means Leeming's available which is why you see Hot Hit Gaming is picking up uh, Leeming and Muradin some good lockdowns and burst going out already there's a very particular strategy that applies to Towers of Doom that will be the Cho'Gal so we'll not be surprised to see that picked up here somewhere along the lines. It's also the Vikings' plan. But nope, it's going to be Felstead and Ragar first. Uh, Felstead has got that increased mobility, great range damage. Um, generally, just want to make sure that he's able to cancel any channeling on those uh, altars. Uh, last pick now, probably going to be a warrior here for FFKG. Do note that this is actually a very, very important match for both teams. Uh, this could very well be the elimination game here from day one. And both teams just wants to have uh, a bit of a chance to review the day and the quality of the competition going into day two that's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, it's um, it's a very interesting position for tomorrow. It's a double elimination best of three bracket. So you definitely want to make sure that you get a better seating here. And Tesla already getting picked up. Tesla provides vision. Uh, that's, a, that's an extra good point here for FFKG. Tesla at least will be able to provide that extra um, anti-gank, if we can call it, from this vision. Sonya getting banned out. Now, I like that ban specifically because it is uh, it does a lot of synergy with Ragar, Tesla, and Sonya. And Sonya, if you just imagine having Leeching Plasma as well as and Brace and Ragar just with the Ancestral Healing, Sonya's practically never going to die. FFKG now with the Thrall ban and uh, Hothead Gaming with a solo Muradin, I don't think they're actually going to go and commit to this one. Probably want to consider Zeratul or Vikings. Uh, they still have a pretty good spot here to decide what they want to do. FFKG, I would not be surprised if they also pick up Chokal. Like they got two supports, they got uh, one good range damage healer there. Uh, Chokal is the, the only body you want to make sure that stays alive at the end. For HHG here, definitely going to con consider if they want to go for uh, two range damage healers or just one. Uh, if they want to go for one more, we definitely advocate to go for the Jaina. I think Jaina Leeming provides uh, way too much burst to be ignored. There's also Zeratul if they want to go for melee assassin. Um, probably want to secure the healer first. That's the Uther that they probably have to pick here. Don't see it being any other support. I think Malfurion um, will be at the other Bible. Oh, oh God. Looks like they're considering Arthas. Okay, no, it's just going to be Lunara. Lunara is kind of like a split damage dealer. I don't think that she's going to go for the standard build on the Starwood Spear unfair advantage. Probably want to go and pick up the splintered shot build here just to do AoE consistent damage and more mobility lockdown. Leaming with the Arcane uh, up should be looking to burst down the back line. But you got to be very careful about a potential pick here. And if it's, um, if it's a Cho'Gal, they still have the last pick here for Lyric. So you definitely want to pick up a support. I think Uther for solo support could be a little bit tricky, which is why they're going for Malfurion. Um, we also got to see Malfurion and Lunara. Now, the reason why Malfurion is slightly better compared to Uther is because if Cho'Gal gets picked up here, Uther is not going to cut it in terms of heals. I don't think he's going to be able to save up enough. Uh, no. It's going to be very tricky. Now, FFKG with two picks here. They need one warrior and one damage dealer. They can combine that into Cho'Gal, or they can try and split that one up into um, to various other uh, strategies. But I don't think they're actually going to go for Vikings at this stage, because they already have two support. Picking up Vikings is probably just a little tad too greedy. FFKG, renowned, uh, Malaysians actually generally renowned for playing Lunara and then Greymane. Greymane got banned up, which is a uh, hot hit answer to this position here. They just want to make sure the Malaysians don't get to play that Greymane. 30 seconds at the time pool left. Not much time. Um, still deciding and debating whether they want to go and lock in this Cho'Gal. 
Looks like, nope. If it's going to be a Diablo, pretty tricky position for them to be in. Um, Johanna's actually pretty okay as well, but she's got Shoe Glare to cancel out the, cance uh, the channeling on the Tribute, or rather the Ulta. Diablo here should be able to set up a fight quite well, but he needs to have another range AoE damage dealer, which is severely lacking in this instance. Um, Jaina would be a good pickup, but Diablo, Jaina, lack of synergy straight out. Peronda, oh man, it's just, no, I don't think it's going to work out that way. It has to be the Jaina. Now, Peronda, it's it's not going to work because they already have two support. A third one is just going to kill the team. So, going for Jaina here. And Malaysians being the only team uh, in this competition that actually run Diablo before. Okay, so there we go. Diablo, Jaina, Tessa, Feldstad, and Ragar. Full lineup here for FFKG and Hothead Gaming. Um, they definitely need another plan here. On the sides, it's actually a very exciting game uh, from Group 2. I think that's Relics versus Renovasha 1. Unfortunately, that's not going to be on stream. But we'll, we're going to bring a live update of the score as this goes on. The last pick here, Lyric. Wouldn't advise going for Lyric. I think that... Um, Okay, fine, they went for it anyway. I think that going for another Bruiser would have been slightly better. Lyric's just not so effective. Probably good to try and counter a huge HP hero like Diablo. And that's exactly the plan. Um, but you got to be very sure because that's Testa, Rhaegar. Diablo's not going to go down easy. All right, Towers of Doom. In terms of uh, canceling, canceling the um, Altus, we'd say that Testa is going to have the advantage. Same goes for Feldstad, Jaina. On this side for the red team, there is the Malfurion, the Lunara, Gleaming as well. So, seems to be split down the middle for me. I would say that, personally, my preference here would be towards FFKG because they have two support. And they got Ragar on that side. I think that Ragar and Tassadar are just too good to fall into the same team there. So once we get um, the lobby invite, we'll go into this game number one. Hopefully, we are going to get some um, pretty exciting games here. Could be the elimination match between both teams, uh, FFKG as well as Hothead Gaming. And in the, um, in the back lines, very, very tricky position here. Uh, it's tricky because there is a uh, Renovasha 1 versus Relics. And that match itself will decide who's going to go into the and get the top seat out of group two and getting a direct free ticket to the upper brackets tomorrow. For this series here, it's an elimination match. So whoever loses this one, it's probably still not going to get a single point. So Towers of Doom, very generically speaking, you really want to have like good rotations. You really want to have uh, I don't know. Some some players actually, some teams actually really like running Vikings on this game on this map because uh, the split soak is really effective. You also have a very irritating technique of uh, the just canceling the channel on the altars. Just poke and soak, and you get that advantage already. Especially since you're trading some core HP for a level lead, which is definitely worth it. As long as it's not like trading 10 HP just basically for, I think it'd be good enough. So TNK's team here. Um, very, very strong, actually a very strong lineup here from uh, Hothead Gaming. Uh, but FFKG, man, Malaysia's uh, hope here in this tournament, they're going to have to try and make sure that they qualify through to day number two. All right, still waiting for them to join into uh, the lobby. Uh, just in case you guys are wondering who's on FFKG. Um, it's Sephiria, Doll Eater, Om Nom Nom, Stearns84, and Mopolicious. On the side here for Hothead Gaming. Uh, Andrew Baby, TNK, Rosen Maiden, Arata, and one other pickup. To be honest, I think a lot of people is expecting to go pick up the Cho'Gal there just now for this, uh, for this draft under FFKG. Would have been a really good pick. 
even for uh, Hothead Gaming because they got like um, they got the Li Ming there. Even if they do pick up Chogal for themselves, I think it's still a very valid strategy. They have those Siege Brothers as well as um, just a lot of burst damage going out against uh, the frontline structures, and those don't respawn. Today, actually, what's surprising is we actually saw a lot of Grey Main bans. And somehow, Southeast Asian teams just don't want to deal with the Grey Main. Um, all right, still waiting for uh, the game to start. In the meantime, just a lowdown here. Two groups already. Resurgent is leading group number one. And in group number two, we got a very close match that's happening in the background now between um, Relics and Renovasha One. All right. Seems like we're going to Taos of Doom here. Match number four, by the way. Two more matches after this one. And we'll wrap up the broadcast for today. We'll be back again tomorrow for um, for the finals and also the winner bracket fi finals first. And then we go to the lower bracket where we eliminate more teams. Every single match tomorrow is going to get broadcasted. So don't worry about it. I think one, two, three, four, five, five, best of three minimally. And also going to get the sixth one if there's a rubber set. Still, thank you guys for hanging out. I know some of you are waiting for Europe to start the regionals, and um, I'm very excited for Europe. Dignitas looks really good. All the best, man. Just very excited. This is this is just really good weekends here. Every single weekend, we get some great games. Right. So, seems like you're waiting for me now. Oh, we may actually have to. Um, we may actually have to try and reform uh, this lobby. But anyway, just um, just to keep you guys updated with the current standing once again. Both of these teams. Uh, both of these teams are actually facing elimination right now. They don't have a single win under the belt, so. so that's the sad part. Okay. Seems like there's a bit of a bug in the uh, lobby. <laughs> but no, I, I'm just hyped, man. Six up slot right now, so you're going to have a lot of observers. A lot more, um, just a lot more easier to execute multi-language streams and the like. Tows of Doom it is, and um, remaking the lobby because of a uh, bug. So there's a lot of uh, speculation that Relics will face resurgence in the final match tomorrow, and that's the match that everyone in Southeast Asia is waiting to witness. I'm saying that with pride because both are Singapore teams, but so far today we are only eliminating two teams, uh, one from each, um, one from each group, and Group A. This is it, man. FFKG or Hothead Gaming. One of these teams will not continue tomorrow on the road to Korea. So Towers of Doom, the latest addition to this uh, this map, to this map pool, and some good teams like E Star in the Gold League decided that they, that they just don't want to play in Towers of Doom because it's very different from what they normally expect, and and I think that worked out well. Here nowadays in SEA, there's a lot of um, cheesy strategy. In fact, we started this entire day here with a cheese spread. The Zagara Nidus network with a Abathur clone. That clearly did not work out. But it's still a great effort regardless. So 
And we're now loading up into uh, Towers of Doom. And I'm really happy to have you guys join me today on the SC Originals. This is the um, final part of the circuit. And here we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, on blue team now, we're gonna, we've got with us here Feng Fei K Gaming from Malaysia, top seed as well. Safiri are going to be playing as the Jaina, doll leader on the Ragar, Om Nom Nom, um, playing as the Diablo Surge 84. We'll be playing as the Tassadar, with Felicia's on to Feldstead. And on the red team, we've got HHG Hothead Gaming from Thailand, second seed. Ailey is going to be playing as the. Um, We'll be playing as the Lunara TNK onto the Mirrodin. Arata will be a Leeming, Rosen Maiden on the Malfurion, and Andrew Baby will be playing as the Leoric. Seems like we're going to some form of a ping issue in the offline venue in Malaysia. They're going to try and uh, probably just relock and to come back into this game. Going out on this side though with Devil Do. Resurrection cost of 60 souls. This could be an indication that it could actually be Apocalypse. I don't know. This works out pretty well with the um, level 20 stack on Apocalypse that it costs whenever you, uh, whenever you die. Conjurer is going to get picked up by Tessdar. Very standard. Sleeping Marksman on Feldstat as well. And on the side here for the red team is Power Hungry on the Leeming. And we also got reanimation onto Leoric. Seems like it's going to be Reverberation on the Murden. Natural perspective gonna be picked up here by Lunara. Las Benales from Malfurion undecided yet. Definitely gonna be a close series. Um I'm expecting some really good games from this set. Of course only one team is gonna continue on, that's the that's the sad news here. Alright, still no information on uh I don't I think that the game also just barely begun for uh, group two. Resurgence, uh, sorry, Relics as well as uh, Renovatio Team 1. So it seems like still the same latency issue that they're facing in the offline venue. Once this is done, they should be able to start this game. Now, early game, I'm going to be expecting uh, Blue Team to have a bit of a lead here because they have a lot more late game centric, um, co you could say, talents that's needed here. Uh, Lyric needs crushing over level 13. And your Lunara Splinter Shot level 7, but after that you want to do a lot more damage from level 13 and 16 as well. That's pretty tricky. Leaming, of course, needs the Glass Cannon level 13 to be able to do 25% extra damage. And on this side, though, for the blue team, they got two support right off the bat. So the two support is going to be able to provide a lot more sustain throughout the entire early part of this uh, game here. Either be it through uh, channeling the altars or basically just going out for a push. Or just sustaining through fights. Uh, two support really, really strong right now in this car meta. And for SEA at least, two Number one, match four. And one team's not going to make it past this uh, group stage. Jaina going for uh, deep chill instead of lingering chill. Very, very different uh, pickup here. A bit of extra slow, but does not last as long. No extension to six seconds, just, um, just some extra 5% slow. Most Jaina players actually decided to not go for deep chill. Uh, but going for lingering chill instead. Lingering chill, what it can, what it, what difference it makes is that at least you um, you draw out the gank a little bit for deep chill. That increased slow has been nerfed a long, long time ago, and that's a little bit tricky to pull off. Now, Sephiria Blizzard actually cutting off the retreat route here for Rosen Maiden. Rosen Maiden probably going to drop here. TNK with a good stun to the front, but there we have the Cone of Cold taking off Malfurion already. Top lane is going to be Lyric up against the Felstad. Uh, pretty clean lane here, but definitely Felstad's <laughs> going to win this one. It's a range here at the end of the day. Now, level two both sides, and they're still trying to pick up a lot of EXP as much as possible. The Siege is going out here, but uh, she's up against Tessdor coming up from Leeming. 
He's going to have the ability to shield the tower, which you just saw happen there. And immediately they decide to switch up the lanes. Arata now going to be able to siege the top uh, tower. So level three, still very even right now. First set of altars going to spawn really soon. The bottom lane seems like there's a lot of um, heroes right here. Going to be very careful about that. Rotation's pretty, pretty important. Now here we have the bottom altar spawning. Now, because it's foul stat, top lane is definitely going to have an advantage in terms of EXP soak here for the blue team. Uh, but it's also pretty tricky because you really want to make sure that you pick up a target before you go for the Alta. And they still have the Malfurion there that uh, basically can cancel Alta channeling very, very easily with his skill sets. We'd love to see him go for a Loon's Grace, though. That's going to help him increase range and uh, put him safe. Let's see what he picks at level 4. Okay, no, it's just going to be the Rampant Grove. Rampant Grove, um, a little bit extra heal, maybe. But nothing surprising so far. Try and V-Ray going to get picked up here at level 4 for Li Ming instead of uh, the Dominant or the Magic Missile build. Okay, Om Nom Nom taking a bit of damage from the Drain Hope. But you can see clearly foul stats on top. Arata. Somebody going to have to stop Arata right now, but nope. It seems like it's going to be 4 damage to the core here of the blue team, FFKG. It's a conscious um, effort for them from them to not contest the altar. The plan here is to get a level lead, which they got. Hothead Gaming now. One level down. And you could see the Leeching Plasma getting picked up here by the Tessadar. Primarily just um, for Feldstat, probably. Some extra heals. You will be expecting a Giant Killer on Feldstat at least level 13. Fire Devil uh, coming out from Diablo, Feral Heart, Snowstorm, Power Throw. Very standard stuff here. Okay, so far 36 against 40. That's the core HP that's left. Um, still very slow and even game. Not much of a rotation really. There, there's a lot of um, lane roaming, but it's not not, not enough for a kill. Om Nom Nom is second too slow with a shadow charge. Signing stomp is not going to be enough. Blizzard also, unfortunately, second with not connecting. TNK in the back line though, and it see, seems like Leeming's already dropping somewhere on the top lane. Missed that action completely because of the mid lane uh, action there. Still, we're going to see uh, FFKG looking for the level 7, and there we have it. We'll love to see the secret weapon. There we go. Probably going to be the Cause Embrace. Hold that thought, though. Falstad, a little bit of trouble the last few hits here, and it's going to be enough. Falstad will go down. Cause Embrace it is, as well as bad momentum up for Diablo. On the side here, it's going to be Cleanse. Jaina going for Frost Bolt. Uh, this Icelands build. Man. Icelands is um, pretty okay. I mean... Some some people actually prefer going for that instead of a uh, snowstorm. No wait, snowstorm is this one. Yeah, increased radius by thirty percent. Um, but hold that thought. though, top lane, you're already seeing the uh, mercenary camps going to the red team. Alta spawning just under fifteen seconds right now. Blue team again in the bottom area. Seems like they're going for rotation against Angel Baby. Second set of uh, Blizzard does not connect. With Leoric Lurk still dropping very, very low. Overpower coming back out again. He does not have Rave Walk. Some heals going down, but it will not be enough. And there we go. Lyric's already gone. Leaming also going down. Two men down on side of Hothead Gaming. FFKG with some rotation once again. Two men stun coming from TNK. Very nicely done. Uh, but they want to try and make sure to put up a fight here at the Alta area. With Felicious. Buying some time. And Jibibi responding as a Leoric there. Nom Nom taking a bit of a damage. But with the Shower Charge against Leoric. Tassadar taking a bit of damage as well in front line. Gonna be very careful about that. Nom Nom still alive, still holding strong, but gonna have to drop soon. A few more hits, but there yeah, we have the chain heals going now, connecting beautifully. Now Ailey's also dropping a lot of HP there, but last few hits from Dolida did not go through that Feral Lunge, or whatever that's, uh, that's called, was not enough for a kill. Aratel once again channeling up this one. Felicia's well, looking for uh, the Hammerang. Zephyria also going in. Um, a lot of posturing from both sides. Diablo actually going down. Great chase there by Angel Baby, but he does have the instant respawn. TNK dropping a lot of HP, but there we have, oh wow, a lot of damage coming from the Arcane up against Regar. Elise once again channeling up the um, Alter. Not going to get it. Hopefully just, just posturing once again. Um, already having the option for Seeker, but going for the Arcane up build instead with Zay's Vengeance. Baby, giving chase against Falstad. 
Diablo going to work against Li Ming, but no fall off from the rest of the team though. And slowly but surely you can see that FFKG, they're up to something. They're not really going to commit to this fight. They're just basically soaking up the bottom lane as and when possible. Ailey's now doing a little bit of damage against Doll Eater. Doll Eater, going to be very careful. Ragar getting slowed as well. The Sun does lock down. And it's two men killed. Actually, two takedowns on both support. But Feldstad, very close there. Not going to get the Alta. All that, all that effort in split lane soak did not work out at the end. They just hit level 10 first, but they lose the Alta. And also for uh, HHG, very close to level 10, they equalized the level lead that Fong Fei K had in the early part. We have the um, Lightning Breath. It's not going to be Apocalypse. I'm not going to see that stack up. Archon as well. Ancestral Healing, Mighty Gust, and Wattle Elemental. Now for the red team, though, it's um, it's very standard pickups once again with Entomb instead of much with Black King. And uh, everything looks to be very, very standard. Nothing too special. Lunara level 7 split with Spear, like what I told you just now, they probably just want to do like range split AoE damage with Lunara. That's why they go for this build. Not sure if she's going to go for Spell Shield though, we'll have to see that. From Nom Nom with another rotation, trying to catch out this Malfurion. She's not really connecting there. Stern's also going in. Uh, and we have a Mighty Gust coming already. Blizzard going down as well. Tranquility being popped and Tomb now being very effective, locking down just the Jaina. Uh, Rosen Maiden just keeping the sustain through. There we have yet another Ancestral Healing connecting beautifully, but Mopo Lishi dropping so low. Shield's going down. It will not be enough. Feltz has already gone. Sephira dropping even lower. TNK giving the chase. There. Hothead Gaming finding themselves ahead right now. Diablo dropping. Diablo's gone. Stern's also going to go down. Three men down on the side of Malaysia. And for uh, the ties, man, that was a really good play there by Rosen Maiden. I uh, would say that the Entomb actually saved the team a lot. The Entomb uh, connected beautifully. And that did not allow Gina to give chase. We got a replay. We're going to pull that one out. So look at this Entomb. Very beautiful space there. Oh, sorry. This is after the Entomb. Well, Felicia's taking a bit of a damage. Arata from the back line. Just uh, disintegrate. A lot of work being dealt that day. Yep. Just uh, leaving, doing leaving stuff. Okay, so back to real time. 20 seconds before the altar spawn. It's going to split left and right here. And... Um, Clearly, I don't think HHG is going to get level 13 before the auto spawn, so there will not be a much of a level lead, but it's going to be up to um, Lyric to soak up the mid area and try and get a level 13 before they contest the left side. For FFKG, they're doing whatever they can to get this uh, altar first. Nice stun. That actually cancelled out the channeling. And you baby. Nope, Skeletal Swing did not connect, but oh my god, that Thon would find it. And they're buying so much time. The Alta on the right already gone. Still not, still finally getting level 13, but they're already dropping so, so low. And you, baby, going in for commitment here. There we have Tranquility once again, but they have a Lightning Breath and a choke point. And it stings so bad. The whole town now, in fact, going down. And we have the rest of the blue team dropping very, very low. Red team also. Tranquility keeping most of them alive. But Diablo with that instant burst there could have been picked up. Um, some kills at least did not get anything except for one skeleton there. Just the Lyric. 28 against 36 right now, 10 minutes in. Level 13 uh, talent here did not help the red team in getting the advantage there. Very tricky spot here, but great plays by Om Nom Nom. So it's going to be Burning Rage on uh, both the Muradin as well as Lyric. And it looks like it's an uh, unfair advantage. So pretty much a hybrid build once again. Splinted Spear going to the unfair advantage. Om Nom Nom has a Diablo, a little bit of trouble, but oh, Tassadar, a little bit of trouble as well. And Tomb connecting beautifully. Uh, Thornwood Vine looking for the extra pickoff. Unfortunately, Noxious Blossom not going to connect. And Jubaby as well. Ah, oh, so close. Diablo was able to run away. Jay now in the bottom area now. Scared to swing. Not the best. Zephyria throws out the uh, Frostbolt. Will be able to run away for now. But then we have the Entangling Root. Nice sidestep. Arcane Knob did not connect, but no. Nope, pumpkin heads behind. Still going to be a kill regardless. Jaina going down. The stun's coming out from Muradin. Great place. And your baby. And two in under 10 seconds to pick up the first bell tower in the bottom left. And 20 seconds before the altar spawn. So far, very consistent lead for HHG. In terms of core HP, whatever you name it, they got it. Giant killer on this felt stat. Um, clearly, main objective here is to try and pick off the Muradin. <laughs> that's, uh, that's about it. And, um, okay, we also have got some increased heal getting picked up here, the tidal waves. That's basically because 
They want to stay ahead in terms of heals and AoE kills, you know, Testa is not good with that. I, in my opinion, don't really think he needs the Tidal Wave to stay ahead of uh, support and heals. But what I thought, Rekim already got one ult and a Rosa Maiden with Tranquility popped up. And we still see the Ice Block, very nice use of Ice Block right there. And uh, Malfur is going to be okay. TNK also pops the Avatar. They are ready for a fight right now. The Antub connecting beautifully. And Sestra connecting also on Jaina. But no follow up still. Waiting for Leeming to reset his skills just yet. Ailey is a little bit out of position there by the overpower from Diablo. Diablo dropping very low. Diablo will go down. No apocalypse to finish up the combo. Regar also going down. FFKG dropping so, so low. Arata now just giving chase against Testa. Felt that also gone. Three men down. Maybe make it four. Uh, we have the dimensional ship as Stern's definitely dropping even more HP here. Will go down at the end. Make it four men down on the side of the Malaysians. And HSG, man, in a really good spot so far in his game. 18 against 36. They are at uh, two times the core HP of Feng Fei K. Now we also have the uh, replay. We're going to pull it out. Look at this uh, moment right here. Om nom nom with a bit of a guard on the flank. A second too slow, actually. Um, Ailey survived that part and she continued to do a lot more damage to the back line. Some great heals from Malfurion and yeah, that's about it. It's nothing that uh, the blue team could have done in that instance, just very, very unfortunate for them. Okay, so we're now uh, going to the mid lane area where the tower is also going down. And they're both just uh, once again rotating a little bit. Pumpkin heads on top available for grabbing. Up for grabs and Enju baby um, scouting the flank in the front line. Not able to do anything. There we go. So they just lost the bottom left valve tower. They also didn't really push the lanes on top here for uh, the Thai team, HSG. This uh, set of uh, pumpkin heads will definitely ensure that this port's gonna go down. Okay, Hammerang being used here, Sephiria. He can actually go in here for Lyric, he's kinda out of position. Rave walks back into range of his allies, will be okay. And about 30 seconds, the ult is just gonna spawn right now. Very bad spot for FFKG to be in. They gotta decide they wanna pick this three, uh, three damage or going in for uh, the Bell Tower first. Because it's still Alta, I don't think they actually have a choice. They're gonna have to pick a fight here. Dunara already in the bottom area. We'll be able to try and channel this one up. Meanwhile, for blue team, they really need a level 16. So they're also trying to suck up the laning XP a little bit. That's what Felstad is trying to do. Lunara picks up the uh, charge. That's five more damage to the core. TNK with a two-man stun. Stern's also popping the dimensional shift. And Jubebe coming in from the back. Looking for the flank. And Tomb connecting a more malicious. But this is actually a Felstad. Should have the barrel. He takes flight out of it, we'll be fine. Om nom nom on the uh, front line there with a shadow charge, but dropping a lot of HP all of a sudden. Arcane up connecting on the back line as well. And Sestra brings him up to healthy levels once again. And you still see the test are gonna be okay. He already has got a fresh ins up. But that that channeling on that Alta. Once again, five more damage and one does wonder how much more punishment can FFKG take? There we have Diablo with the uh, lightning breath going to the front line. Lyric already dropping Om Nom Nom, buying a lot of time for the team, but just a lack of support overall, no ancestral. And uh, there we have Vienna another damage on Falstad. The burrs going through, Falstad going down. One for one exchange, Lyric against Falstad. Still the advantage is gonna go to the red team. They're given the opportunity for a push against the, uh, the fort here. Actually, it's 2 for one Diablo died there, so he respawn does not have uh, good soul stones. But hold that thought, Jaina dropping solo. Pops the uh, ice block. Ailey's already waiting for it. Fumble Vine does not connect. Ailey's now a little bit of trouble. The Blizzard does connect. One charge. Zephyria getting a lot of shields from the Tessadar. Ailey's, oh, so close. Fumble Vine again going in. And Jubebe now respawning. There we have the Entomb onto just one Diablo. It's not going to be good enough. Diablo will drop down, though. A lot of heals coming out. Sustain going through, but... Damage has been dealt and Diablo takes uh, the fall. Now 40 seconds before we respawn, there's not even enough soul in his black soul stone. Eight more HPs on the core here for the blue team. Hothead Gaming, they got this figured out. Two level lead, very comfortable uh, pacing for them. And Lunara also go going for let them wither instead. So this is a pure utility, let them wither, stacking up with Stinted Spear. Uh, those crippling spores gonna do a lot of work. 
So what she just does is the Noxus Blossom being used as she attacks three targets, pops the Crippling Spores, and then there we have it, the slow is going to go in. Diablo on the other side having Rampage, Fire Storm, and you also see the Earthgrass Totem coming out from Rhaegar. Okay, Archon being used already, Tranquility also coming out. Diablo now with the uh, Lightning Breath, but it looks like it's not going to end up the Ice Block there by Rosa Maiden, just very much on point. Also going to see the two connecting the back lines now. Zephyr dropping a lot of HP, now Andrew Baby also going to go down. TNK in the front line, having to pull back out. This has some heals from Elfiri now, looking for the stun, but does not get it off. Will also take the fall, Andrew Baby. Looking for the respawn, not going to get it. His turns now, trying to run back out from the bottom here, but Lunar doing so much more damage once the target is slowed there. Just completely mind-blowing. Level 20 is hit here by the Thai team. And that's uh, Hothead Gaming. Temporal Flux it is, Spectral Leash. It's also gonna be the Hardened Shield, Galloping Gate, and looks like it's gonna be GG. Ladies and gentlemen, game one. We'll go to Hothead Gaming. Great game played by the Thai. And um, Malaysians in this instance, just a paling comparison. Okay, we're gonna pull a replay of the last fight. It's a very slow but steady game here. Eight HP left, and if, as you can see, Diablo going down, Rosen made and just healing up the, uh, the back line as much as possible. Mighty Gust was pretty effective. That's the main reason why the front line, Andrew Baby as well as TNK was dropping. But uh, if you realize, there's just too much damage from both the Lunara as well as the um, Li Ming. Li Ming is doing so much burst. And still, it's effective at the end. So the Pumpkin Head's doing three damage in the bottom area as well as the... Um, the altar doing five, a total of eight to finish up that game there in case you guys are wondering what happened. And uh, 77,000 he hero damage by Lunara. Very, very nice. Six kills there. MVP, Ailis. Very, very good positioning in general. When you want to play Splinter Spear, positioning is very important because you want to make sure that um, you slow and you just stack up the let them wither as well. So, so far, beautifully executed by Ailis. Um, all right, so we're going for a short break now. Game number two coming up real soon. This is Babel. We'll be back shortly. See you guys in a bit. <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, we're looking at Abolish Magic, Tooth and Claw, the Grey Main build. It's a little bit confused, Grey Main, uh, if you ask me. Uh, Storm Shield, Hard and Shield, Double Storm Shield. And we have the Force Wall. Boss, up oh, going to the red team, perfectly done there. The false wall was just so on point. Nom nom nom, he's in Golf Cost. And that tornado just pushing him back over and over again. And Murdens in a lot of trouble, but Malfurion goes down first. And HHG now looking for the game ending moment. Still not gonna get this.